Bay. We have a newer Briggs and Stratton um, Troy belt. It's the label on it, but it's a Briggs and Stratton engine. Apparently, it will run, but then over time, um, it will start to kind of surge and chug and everything. So, I have two ideas. One could be the carb. This is a 5 16 by the way. Or two, it could be the auto choke. Kind of malfunctioning. Let's take these bolts off. He's going for. So let's take a look. Uh, let me show you something. So this is the auto choke. It when right now, if you look in there, it's closed. But if you push it, which over time the spring will do by itself, it is now open. When it's cold, it's like this. When it's warm, it's like this. You see this spring it is too taut. Ah, uh -uh, there we go. Okay, you can see. So I don't know if... I mean, obviously someone did that. So I'm thinking we're gonna take the carb off. I have a different spring. I'm gonna put a new spring on. And probably clean the carb because there's a reason why they were doing that. Uh, it's probably dirty. It's usually how they work out. So let me put you back. We'll get started with taking it off. Okay. So I have this internal conflict at the moment because I have this carburetor that has a spring on it, but um, I don't know the condition of it. Nah, I'll just take it off and clean it. It's not very hard. I'll show that too. To clean these plastic carburetors is not that hard. I've shown it a couple times, but I've seen a couple people online say if you go to like Amazon or Birds and Stratton's website or wherever and buy the little inner um, pieces, I guess it'd be considered an emulsion tube. I don't know. Um, that it will. It's just better. My only problem with that is. Every time I've looked for one, never quite said the size. And while you're supposed to look at the number on your engine to kind of get the right one, I'm sure it's jetted appropriately. I'd rather just use the one that's in here. It just makes sense to me. Let's do a gas. About half a tank. Someone's been in here. The clip has been best way. Unless this was made on a Friday late evening at the Briggs and Stratton factory. I don't think that's right. Well, I guess even then these are made in China, so I don't think that type of work ethic is condoned. What's up, garage puppy? Okay. So now, this, that wasn't even on tight. I guess it could have came off a little bit when I was doing it. Oh yeah, the spring tension on this is way too 
too much. Way too much. Compared to the other one. Uh, we'll just do it here. Nah, it's going to leak everywhere. Let me take it over to the carb station and bring you folks, people, whatever you want to be called over. Okay, so garage puppy decides to take residence and right next to the feet. Looks like she has a leaf. Oh no, sunflower seeds. Something tells me Someone had this off, but didn't quite open it. So these are on pretty tight. That's a 9 30 seconds bit. Let's just pour. Maybe it's a little remaining in there out. Fuel looks good. No water so far. That's another thing that can happen with these. The water um, will cause the it to do something. Well, I guess yeah, it can. But water's surface tension is too great so it can't be sucked up in such a small jetting unless it's really pressured into it I and mean, it's not impossible but the amount of pressure you're going to need probably is not going to be done with a small engine at least not a non not modified ones i have in the past taken a non-governed engine and um kind of started on full throttle and then this one's not easy you kind of quickly cup it with your hand because the choke plate just isn't enough. And what that does is it forces all the the pressure the engine's exerting on it through the emulsion tube and sucks it out. That's something I wouldn't do as a repair, but something I would definitely do as an emergency. Like I said, that's a non-governed one. Uh, that one, I think, was an ATV. Well, kind of an ATV. It's like a mini ATV. Fuel looks fine. Okay. So, to do this correctly, you have to hold it right here. And because right here there's a little ball bearing. And then you take your air compressor and blow through the jets, covering your eyes. And that's it. That yeah, looks pretty clean. You can take this section off and clean it but in my experience you never really get any of additional benefit unless there's something really jammed in there like a big piece of dirt even then it has to go through like the smallest of in, um, jet holes right there so that's going to be kind of hard to do so I just never ran across this in there really when I had to be them. maybe they exist while we have it out, let's blow it in here. Okay, well, that's that. Let's put this on. There's only one way it goes on. Now, if this is, if you don't know your tools very well, then don't do this, but I've been using this impact for quite some time, and I know when to stop. Because it is a plastic carburetor. You don't want to overdo it. But you do want to start it with your hand every time. 
take that spring off. I mean, what was that? Let's take the one off here. I'll still keep that carb. That might be a good use for it in the future. Sometimes these seals are nice to have. This fits over these two little arms. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I'm going to put this on, put it back. On. I don't think you really need to see the exact opposite of what you just did, so I'll go ahead and bring you back when I'm done. This is something I want to bring up. I didn't notice until I was even about to put it on. I got the linkages and everything on. But this black o-ring is a seal, and this white piece is like a clip that snaps in there. You don't want to leave it on the intake. You want it to be clipped into the carburetor, because if you don't I mean, more than likely you probably would get a decent seal, but it's just kind of a backup or assurance that you're going to be getting a good um, intake seal if you just have it on the carburetor. So I'm going to take it off, put it on the carburetor, it just snaps into place, and then put the carburetor on, you know, connecting the linkages, and then um, bring you guys back. I got it down, I decided to give it a pull just to see what would happen. I figured it would run, but... Kind of odd. Let me show you. I'm pretty sure it's the coil. After looking at it a little more thoroughly, or oh, listening to it, but watch this. back when I get one uh, ready. So usually it's a sign of an old coil, but it can happen to me too. What it is is that it's breaking up and um, causing it to kind of miss more or less. Now, something you do kind of want to briefly review is the grounding wire. Is the grounding wire in good shape? Is it burnt anywhere? I know it looks fine. Um, or the plug. The plug could also be the reason for this.
fact, I'm kind of liking this one. It looks to be about the same size. In fact, I'm pretty sure it came off its exact style of engine. The only thing you want to be careful of um, is the certain flywheels are different sizes. And if you I think the plug was in all the way too. Oh, smaller must be the five eighths. plug or is it one of those cheap ones? Oh no, it's a Briggs and Stratton plug. You can test it. Maybe if it continues on we'll test that plug but I don't think it's the plug. I think it's the coil. Um, I'm actually going to make a video on how to test um, plugs here soon. So what you do is you take a quarter of an inch socket, some type of thicker paper, like a business card or maybe a large pamphlet or something. And you take this off. It's probably going to be hot. That's hot. Let's disconnect the grounding wire. It looks like we're on the magnet, so that's good. We're going to put this one to the side. As you can see, with the exception of a little bit of rust, they're the same. The grounding plug is right there. Usually I would have to spin the motor around, but because it's already at top dead center, well, at least the firing area may not be top dead center, it might be a little bit off. This is a little bit of a thicker piece of paper folded in half to kind of give it a little extra thickness. I'm going to place... Pretty sure this came off the exact same cell of engine. I've scrapped a lot of these engines over the course of years. Uh, they don't they don't really last too long. There's always those things where if you take care of your equipment, it will last as long as you need it to. And yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true to a point, but you could take care of this to an extreme degree and still have problems. 
He's just not meant to last. They're great. They're a little cheaper. They're fuel efficient. Um, they're easy to work on. They're exceptionally easy in general. There's nothing complicated about this engine at all. But most people, when they go to the store to buy a lawnmower or anything of that matter like that, don't necessarily go there with the idea of, I want to buy something that's easy to repair. same for this type, but in the old Briggs and Stratton manuals and repairs, if you spin the engine backwards and it catches itself, it has enough compression to run. This one definitely has compression, but I was doing that to make sure it's not kind of rough against the magnets on the flywheel, and it's not. And now you do not want to forget about plugging in your ground wire. So if you don't, it's going to be pretty hard to shut this off. You have to plug, unplug the, the um, spark plug. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, put the cover on and bring you guys back once it's ready. So I turned it on for a little bit and just kind of spits and spatters still and dies eventually um... could be the coil I don't think so it usually takes a lot longer for that to happen um... so I took off the cover when I was when it was on and it doesn't seem like oh, burning hot um, it doesn't seem like it, it's like spitting through the carburetor. Like, I literally saw fuel just come out. It kind of makes me think um, this is a valve problem. So the unfortunate part about that is that it is hot. I don't really feel like waiting around to get this done. Plug looks fine. It's a fact looks brand new. So why don't we at least it was brand new. Um, why don't we take the valve cover off? Take a look at what we have in here. You know what? This might be an occasion to wear gloves. dog has to lay right there. Just gonna wear a glove. Spin 
this around a little bit. So right now the intake valve is open. This is a fewer gauge set. You could buy it at any hardware store. With it being hot, I want to go a little bit smaller. Let's do four thousandths. You could go a top dead center. I just find this a little easier if you push it. this intake right here. The intake when it's um, cold should only be at four thousandths. And right now being hot Being hot is probably closer to six thousandths. Um, well, that's definitely not right now, is it? Let us get a paper towel. We'll clean it off so we can potentially save ourselves from being too horribly disfigured from burns. some tools ready and bring you people back. Okay, so you can kind of see the exhaust um, tube uh, port, there we go, port uh, coming from this valve. So that one's the exhaust. This is the intake it's on the lower end. It kind of snakes up. So the intake is the one we're having a problem with. So right here we have an 8 millimeter wrench. Hopefully this can fit on there. If not, we're going to do it this way. And I want to loosen it. Like so. This is a T10. Next we want to find, I'm going to say like, 3,000 is good. It's supposed to be 4 cold, so let's say 3,000 is hot. We're going to drive this in until we get it to the correct. This might take a whole lot more. Okay, for whatever reason, it was the guys turned off, but so 8mm T10 on the inside, 
you undo the T10 and then you kind of tune it with the 8 millimeter. And then you tighten it. Right now you want it to be just snug. Maybe a little less snug. The hard part with this style is that you kind of have to hold it very still. Tighten the T10 so it doesn't move. That's why you want to have the 8mm be a wrench. Because um, if it's a socket, you'll just move the inner screw along with it. And you'll be sitting here for days just wondering why this isn't working. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay. If this doesn't work, then there's something do bad with the carburetor. I don't I don't think so. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I just don't see this being a carburetor issue anymore. It wasn't very dirty. Usually carburetors don't make it spit back. I really don't see four cycles spit through the carburetor very much to begin with. Usually that's a two cycle thing. But, in cases like this, where the valves are definitely a little weird. Maybe the sheer amount of time, because those don't travel very much, um, cause it to spit the, some fuel back. One can hope. Right now, with the exception of just putting a new carb on, it's not too much else to do. Um, we could look at the timing. I could do that. Ah, why not? We already have the cover off. Maybe the timing is just a hair off. Um, let me readjust it real quick. Okay, so now we have that back to normal. Since we already have the cover off, we might as well. I don't remember what size it is. I know it's pretty big. 15 sixteenths. So it couldn't just go up to an inch. Let's use the more torque. Kind of a side note. I have two of these. They're both 20 volt max, but the XR has the ability to kind of distinguish the speed. And you'd be amazed the difference in power this has. So if you're in the market, I highly recommend this one. Not being paid to say that, but I still would highly recommend it spark plug is disconnected. Put the cover on and bring you back. Well, now that you see it on the table again, I'm pretty sure it's evident that we're still doing the exact same thing. So, spitting and popping. I'm gonna 
look at the fuel. Because it backfired pretty decently while I was doing it. Backfiring is usually a sign of lean. brand new. So, don't think it's a fuel problem. I mean, it smells great, and I can imagine why it is good. So, what I am planning on doing now is I'm going to take this carburetor, I'm going to drill out the center jet, put it on there, uh, and again, it looks pretty big already. This might be off of a larger one, or I might have done it already. Um, but let us put it back together. It could just be bad carb, I suppose. Maybe this isn't the original carb to the machine. Maybe the person repaired it, like I said before. Maybe my air compressor isn't set high enough. I don't think it's the last one because it should be at 120, which is plenty to clean out that little center piece. But. That's off. That's off. Plenty of fuel in the carburetor, so it's not like there wasn't any fuel in it. Let's just take a quick look at everything around. It is a craft? No, not really. It doesn't look like it's cracked. Um. Just take a flashlight and just kind of shine and see if you see any daylight. So far, nothing. I don't see anything. I think it's doing pretty good. So, this doesn't work. <laughs> I might just be putting a new plug in, but it's brand new. That'd be odd if a brand new Briggs and Stratton spark plug was bad. Um, but I guess it does happen. <sighs> Not out of the realm of possibilities. It's the same car. The odd part is, usually there's a Briggs and Stratton logo on this side. This one, the old one, does not have it. So maybe it's aftermarket carb and that's the whole problem now. And they just kind of dealt with it for the time being. But, let's put it back on. I don't need to see this, I'll be right back. Okay, so, review, I actually put the car back on, it's still doing the exact same thing. I took the plug out, the good new plug, and looked at it, gapped it correctly, it was like, it's supposed to be 30 thousandths, maybe 32, very, very little, very, very small difference, so, um, I gapped it, same thing. Put a new plug in, same thing. Took the carp back off, went one size bigger in the jet, and 
That's where we stand right now. If this isn't it, I'm... I just don't know what else it would be. Besides... Yeah, no. It's really about it. Um, I mean, like I said, these are simple engines. It shouldn't be that hard. Let's give it a pull. surging pretty heavily but so I think it's pretty much good so at the end of the day it could have been a combination of everything too it could have just been the fact it was surging so much it kind of threw the valves off a little bit um, but yeah it looks like it's good to go now it's really odd I think that the carburetor must have been replaced at one point or There might have been just some really hard, nasty gas in there that just didn't quite blow out with the air compressor. But then I even had to one size up the jet. So that's the odd part. But it works good now. The oil's good. I'm going to call the owner, say hello to Garage Dog. She's going to take a nap in probably the worst spot she can. And yeah, tell him it's ready. Uh, probably pressure wash it though, just to kind of pretty it up and I have no idea what this is going on with. I don't know but the handles are kind of funky to begin with so I'm not going to worry too much about that. They just wanted to run not worry about that. Okay well if you like what you see definitely like subscribe. I'll see everyone later. Keep on watching. Have a good night.